So Overwatch just hit 25 million players. This is a massive milestone considering the game literally just launched. So because of that, we know that there's going to be a lot of new players. And I'm sure you guys are wondering what are going to be some of the best settings or what settings you should be using over other settings. So in today's video, we're going to go over what settings you should be using to hopefully increase your performance or maybe even increase your gameplay. If you enjoyed today's video or finding this information helpful, please consider leaving a like on the video as this will help push it out to more people. That way they can also get some more optimal settings. I do also stream nearly every day on Twitch, so don't forget to follow me there and let's go ahead and hop right into the video. So firstly, let's go over your video settings. So when you first load up the game, uh, your settings are going to be kind of chalked. For instance, your resolution right here, for some reason, a lot of times when you start the game up, it's going to start up in your suggested resolution and at the most minimal frame rate. So it'll be something like this, uh, but you don't want that. You want to go all the way down to the bottom and select your highest frame rate within your resolution. This will give you the smoothest possible gameplay. So this is definitely something that you want to make sure you do. And if you're wondering what your optimal resolution is, it's just the resolution of your monitor and your frame rate is going to be the maximum frame rate that your monitor can handle. For field of view, it is suggested to have this at 103. This is going to be the most optimal and it's not going to cause any sort of fisheye lensing on your resolution. So I would definitely have this at the maximum. Aspect ratio 16 by 9. This is very traditional, but some players like to use a 16 by 10 to give it a slight stretch. Uh, this one right here, dynamic render scale. This one needs to be turned off. When you turn this on, it's going to basically cause your FPS to fluctuate some and it's going to not be as smooth of an experience. So when you turn this off, uh, it keeps your in-game resolution at 100, obviously, but it also has your frame rate. Uh, so where you don't have to select a min max um, like it does right here. So you just want to have this turned off. So as we said earlier, you should have your end game resolution set to 100%. Normally this will be set to automatic. So if you want to set it yourself, you should change this to custom. That way you can ensure that you're always getting 100% in game resolution. Same thing goes with your frame rate. It will be set to automatic initially. You're going to want to turn that to custom and just set it to your preferred refresh rate. This is so that it ensures that you receive this amount. If you change it to automatic, you may not get the maximum performance that you should be getting. Next for VSync, you wanna have this off, triple buffering off, and reduce buffering off. As always, the NVIDIA Reflex setting is dependent on your hardware. For me, I am using Enable Plus Boost because my game is GPU dependent. If you are CPU dependent, then you wanna have Enabled. Um, if you're not really sure, just set it to enabled and test it from there and then try enable plus boost and see which one gives you the better performance. Then for gamma contrast and brightness, I have those all set to their default values. You can tweak this if you like, but the default settings seem just fine to me. If your monitor is HDR supported, you can use this, um, but I wouldn't. Reason being is turning on HDR, it will lower your frames. You don't really need the extra resolution boost in my opinion. Now we're going to move to graphics quality and from here you basically just want to set everything on low just hit this preset set everything to low and you should be good from there if you want to take screenshots you can set this to like five to seven x and i have texture quality set to high um you don't need to you can set this to low and it will increase your performance but i already get like insane frames so i already have this set to high but nothing else you really go over here just have pretty much everything set to the lowest then as we go to details, you want to have your display performance stats on and you want to be using the show frame rate. This will help determine if you're dropping any frames or if you have any lag with the network latency. And it'll show your ping and that way you know if it's just your ping or if it's something hardware related. On to the sound settings from here, the only setting you really need to change in my opinion is the play sound when teammate is eliminated. Uh, you'll get a little beep once your teammates die and this is beneficial because it helps determine if you should reposition or position yourself a little bit better. If you're a tank, sometimes you're just holding the front line so hard that you may not even notice that the teammates behind you have been eliminated. In this case, you'll find yourself in a very unfair situation and it's better to just back out than to try to enforce a fight that you know you can't win. Same if you play any DPSers who play in the enemy's backline like sombra it's important to know if your teammates are being eliminated before you try to backline them because if you backline the entire team you're not going to win that fight even if you do hack somebody next on to controls i use a 4.3 sensitivity with 800 dpi that's my personal preference and, and this is just what works for me you can try it out if you want but it would be best to try to find your own sensitivity from here the only other thing that i changed is my reticle uh, the type i have it set to crosshairs all the time 
So no matter which hero I'm using, I'll always have a crosshair. And this is the settings that I use. One thing that you really do want to have off is to show accuracy, in my opinion, as this when you have it on will make your crosshair bloom like this. And that's not really good for aiming. So I make sure that I have this off. I have my color set to yellow. This is a color that I can see very easily. Uh, thickness set to one, crosshair link to five, center gap to six, opacity set to 83 on both. Dot size set to two, but dot opacity is, is set to zero, so you can't see the dot anyway. And then I have it scale with the resolution, that way it looks proportional. Next, you're gonna go to the gameplay tab, and one of the few settings you should have on is the enable post matchmaking auto queue. This will put you to where if you're roll queuing and quick play, I believe is the only time this works, then you won't have to constantly continue to pick your role. It'll just auto queue you up with the same role. And even if you're not role queuing, it'll still just put you in a game again instead of having to select the game mode again. And for network, you want to make sure that you have limit client and server send rates off because from my understanding, this will affect your tick rate. That's what I've read online. I'm not really sure how true that is, but it is worth having this off as I believe it's defaulted that way. Uh, and then it's good to have the network quality settings on. This is what gives you a little identifier up in your left hand corner is if you're lagging or if there's a network connection issue. Next on social, there isn't really many things to change here. Uh, the only other thing, the only thing that you could consider changing is your career profile visibility. If you don't want people looking at your profile, you just want to set this to private. I have mine set to public because I don't really care. But in, if you're one of those players who don't want people seeing your stats, then that's how you'll do that. Lastly, the accessibility tab. The main thing you want to have off here is the camera shake. This is a setting that most games have for some reason, and they have it set to where it defaults to shaking um, instead of being reduced by default. I'm not really sure why games do this so much. Apex has the same issue, but you want to make sure that you have this set to reduce and not default as your screen will shake much less if you do it that way. Next, you also wanna have HUD shake off because this is something that you don't need either. It's kind of useless, as I said earlier. And then reduce menu movement. I have this turned on because of the same reasons. Let's see for the colorblindness. I actually have my friendly set to aqua. This red looks okay. Uh, so I have it set this way in the green and same with the orange. Um, but I am slightly colorblind. So instead of actually changing this to my Deuteronobia, I just set the blue to like a darker blue to me, for me. That way I can identify friendlies a lot easier. And there's my completed Overwatch 2 settings. If you have any questions about the settings, please leave them down in the comment section below. And if you want to see any more content like this, smash that subscribe button and make sure you turn on post notifications. That way you get notified every time I upload a new video. And I'll see you guys in the next video.